so now we're going to briefly touch on planning for external beam radiotherapy. I'm going to talk briefly about how radiation therapy can be given. This is obviously not a picture of the head and neck region, but rather of actually the prostate, but shows the evolution of radiotherapy over the last really decade, decade and a half, whereas in the 1980s and even into the 90s, radiation was simple. It had to be given with only a few different fields. Uh, we treated things that were box-shaped or diamond-shaped, and there was a lot of collateral damage to tissues that were outside of the target region. Uh, in the slide at the upper right, once we were able to kind of better target and select beam angles, we were able to get more conformal targets, meaning treat less normal tissue and treat more of the target tissue and the dose outside of the target, so outside of the regions that we're trying to treat, greatly decreased. And then, you know, in the late 90s and 2000s, the development of intensity modulated radiotherapy or the ability for us to, through each beam angle, kind of modify beamlets within each port that we treat allowed us to even develop more conformal treatments. And now there's the ability to do that with arcs to speed up treatment. And so we can, in one or two arcs, treat patients from basically 180 angles, 180 degrees rather, for basically two arcs and get very, very conformal treatment plans that give very little dose outside of the target region and very high dose to the target region. And so there's a rapid gradient of dose fall off right outside of where we're trying to treat. In this case, the red region is what we're trying to treat and the blue and green show all much lower dose regions. Um, radiation oncology planning for head and neck is probably the most complicated of any site, and that's because of the number of structures that we need to recreate in each patient for their treatment. So once you have been through the, the process of simulation that we'll get into, we as radiation oncologists need to basically recreate your anatomy in three dimensions both by drawing out every normal structure that we care about and all of the target structures, which include both where the primary tumor is as well as the lymph node regions that are involved and the lymph node regions that are at risk. So this is a set of some of the structures that we have to contour for head and neck cases, and that's why sometimes it takes as long as a week or two from the time of your scan for treatment planning to actually begin radiation therapy. And this is an example of what IMRT, or the kind of radiation that we gave five plus years ago versus what we do now with rapid arc. Similarly, overall with respect to the dose to the target, which in this case is red, and then the two blue regions which are on the side uh, demonstrate a lower dose to the lymph node regions at risk. And then outlined in orange are the salivary glands, in particular your parotid glands, that we try to spare to the extent possible in order to preserve salivary gland function and the production of saliva so that late toxicity is reduced. And in the rapid arc plan, we're even able to get more conformal plans than we were able to a few years ago. You can see on the right that we're avoiding the front of the mouth, the, the jawbone, part of the tongue, but really trying to keep dose away from the spinal cord, which is in cyan there in the middle, and that whole middle region is spared, and then keeping dose away from the orange portions, which are, again, the salivary glands. Just a few examples of how conformal and how tight we can make these plans. This is a patient that had not an oropharynx cancer, but a nasal cavity, squamous cell carcinoma, and we were able to treat that region and give very little dose to everything around it. And if you look at the bottom right picture, you can see that there's essentially no dose to the brain, and it stops basically at some of the sinus structures, so the air-filled spaces that are right behind the target. Uh, in this patient, we treated postoperatively for a salivary gland tumor, actually a, of the parotid gland on the right side. And you can see how we're able to spare almost the entire mouth and throat access and just treat the region at risk and a little bit of the lymph nodes below that. This patient had a 
right tonsillar carcinoma. So this is actually an example of a patient with a oropharynx cancer that had a bunch of lymph nodes involved. And I don't have the ability to, to arrow, but if you look at the top left picture, you can see that the green areas are lower dose and the red areas are highest dose. And there are sort of three areas, really four areas there that are the target regions. And that patient had lymph nodes that were involved with cancer on both sides of their neck. And if you look at the picture on the bottom left, you can see uh, in the front to back projection where the lymph nodes are that are involved. And you can see how we can sort of paint dose to the structures at risk and keep dose low to the areas that we don't want to treat. So we basically treat the tumor and the lymph nodes that are involved as assessed by our scanning technology, so a CT scan or a PET CT scan, treat those to the highest regions. Then we have lower dose regions that we treat that are at risk lymph node regions since there is so much lymph node drainage in the head and neck region. And then we attempt to draw out all of the normal structures that we want to spare in this patient. Um, for example, you can see how the dose on the bottom right picture falls off before the spinal cord, avoids much of the uh, sinuses above the palate, and of course, you know, keeping dose to brain essentially uh, zero, which was not possible a decade or two ago. So most importantly, I think we should talk about the process of planning for external beam radiation therapy. So we've learned that the most reproducible and effective way to give external beam radiation is to go slow and steady. So we give a little bit of dose each day for a period of seven weeks, 35 treatments typically over seven weeks given Monday through Friday. Larger doses per day give longer and worse late-term side effects. So months, years later, we found out that by breaking out radiation into little pieces per day, we can make the radiation more tolerable for patients, reduce the risk of late side effects, and we know it works well for killing cancer cells. So the planning process involves something called a simulation. And that scan typically consists of a CT, an MRI, or a PET-CT scan, or some combination of the above. And in particular, we rely a lot on PET-CT technology because that allows us not only to see the anatomy of relevance, but also to see areas that are what we call FDG avid basically areas that are taking up this particular kind of sugar that we're administering for the scan, areas that are metabolically active. So we can see the areas that are metabolically active and tend to be associated with uh, cancer as opposed to areas that are not associated with cancer. So these areas are what we say colloquially as hot. Hot areas on a PET-CT scan imply that it's probably an area that's involved with tumor. So this allows us to map out your anatomy and lets us plan the radiation specifically for you as a patient, just as we drew out those 40 plus structures for that patient that you saw a few slides ago. And patients typically have had scans in the past, meaning in the weeks or months preceding their radiation treatment planning, but we must recreate the scan in order to individualize your radiotherapy treatment. And so although it may seem like it's a little bit of a duplicate, we have to do it in order to create, recreate your anatomy. And we do this in a mask. And the mask starts out as a flat piece of plastic that once is put in water, becomes pliable, and we can mold over to your face and head neck region, and that once it's cooled, looks like the bottom right picture, where although you can see and breathe through this mask, it basically fixes your shoulders, mouth, face, and head to a table board that basically does not allow for flexion extension of your head or any rotation. And this does a couple of things. It lets us more accurately scan you with less mo motion, but it allows us to, on a daily basis, put you into this mask, which we do use for treatment every day, in order to reproducibly set you up in the same position so that we can make sure that we can deliver radiation as accurately as possible. And the less motion associated with your day-to-day -day treatment, the 
smaller margins we can use on our treatment planning, meaning that we can treat less normal tissue. But that does require a high level of precision and requires that you move as little as possible during treatment. So this is a, a long slide that we'll just kind of briefly get into, but the, the planning process can take anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours, depending on the number of scans that we need to do. And then because of the planning, it generally takes one to two weeks to start. And during this, we're creating your anatomy, recreating your anatomy in three dimensions, all the structures that we want to treat and all the structures that we do not want to treat. And we tell the computer, basically, once we've drawn this out, or once the physician has drawn this out, we tell the computer, please deliver radiation dose to these targets and minimize dose to these other structures. And then the plan is typically evaluated by a number of different oncologists, and we pick the best one, and it is evaluated by other physicians to make sure that that is the most appropriate plan. And there's a lot of man hours, person hours, that goes into the creation of each of these plans, and that's why it does take a little bit of time from the start of planning to the actual initiation of radiation therapy. In this slide, we see just a few examples of areas such as the jawbone, the brainstem, which is in uh, purple, uh, the salivary glands here, which are in that light brown color, and then down below, if you look at the bottom, the spinal cord in cyan and um, the esophagus, or your swallowing tube in green, just as an example of some of the structures that we're drawing out in order to treat the targets here, which are actually the yellow regions, and avoid the colored regions that are structures that we're trying to protect. So in the planning process, the next step is your setup, where you'd come in for your first appointment um, on the actual machine. You'll be placed in the same mask that you were scanned and had created for you during the first session. And we will take a lot of different x-rays to make sure that your head is perfectly aligned and that the treatment plan that we designed is deliverable and precise. And that appointment typically lasts for about 30 minutes to an hour and is generally the, the longer appointment. Um, after that, you start, you get your other typically 30, 32 to 34 treatments on the same machine. Um, and you do typically have your choice of time uh, during the day when you can be treated. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Cast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.